Hello. We're continuing chapter three today with 3.3, energy flow and ecosystems. The goal is to use a food web to identify and distinguish producers, consumers, and decomposers, and explain the pathway of energy transfer through trophic levels and the reduction of available energy at successful le successive levels. I think you've heard about most of this stuff before, so we're going to fly through it pretty easily. But hopefully while I was reading the goal, you took, took a look at the um, Gary Larson comic there. It's a good one. Unbeknownst to most or ornithologists, the dodo was actually a very advanced species, living alone quite peacefully until, in the 17th century, it was annihilated by men, rats, and dogs. As usual, yeah, unfortunately, us humans, we are the cause of most problems out there. So let's begin. Our objectives are to trace the flow of energy through living systems and identify the three types of ecological pyramids. So think about it. What happens to energy stored in body tissues when one organism eats another? Energy moves from the eaten to the eater. Where it goes from there depends on whom eats whom. So objective one is trace the flow of energy through living systems. A food chain, as you should know, is a series of steps in which organisms transfer energy by eating and being eaten. Food chains can vary in length. An example from the Everglades is shown. In some aquatic food chains, such as the example shown, primary producers are a mixture of floating algae called phytoplankton. These producers are eaten by small fish, fishes, such as flagfish. Larger fish, like the largemouth bass, eat the small fish. The bass preyed upon by large wading birds, such as the anhinga, which may be ultimately eaten by the an alligator. There are four steps in this food chain. One, two, three, four. All right, the top carnivore is four steps away from the primary producer. But in most ecosystems, the feeding relationships are much more complicated than the relationship described in a single, simple chain, because many animals eat more than one kind of food. Ecologists call this network of feeding interactions a food web. An example of a food web in the Everglades is there shown. Each pathway through the, a food web is a food chain. A food web, like the one shown, links all the food chains in the ecosystem together. The food chain presented earlier is one of the many that make up this web. Producers die without being eaten. In the dead traces pathway, decomposers convert that dead material to, detra to detratus, bleh, which is eaten by detrativores, such as crayfish, grass shrimp, and worms. Pig, frogs, krillfish, and other fishes eat the detrativores. At the same time, the decom decomposition process releases nutrients that can be used by primary producers. They break down dead and decaying matter into forms that can be reused by organisms similar to the way a recycling center works. Without decomposers, the nutrients will remain locked in dead organisms. So it's muy, they're muy importante. So when disturbances of food webs happen, their effect on their can be dramatic. For example, all the animals in this food web depend directly or indirectly on shrimp-like animals called krill. Krill are one example of small swimming animals called zooplankton. In recent years, krill populations have dropped substantially. Given the structure of this food web, a drop in the krill population can cause drops in the populations of all the other members of the food web shown. So let's review objective one. Trace the flow of energy through living systems. Energy flows through an ecosystem in a one-way stream from primary producers to various consumers. Objective th two, identify the three types of ecological pyramids. All right, each step in a food chain or food web is called a trophic level. Primary producers always make up the first trophic level. Various consumers occupy every other level. Some examples are shown. Ecological pyramids show the relative amount of energy or matter contained within each trophic level in a given food chain or food web. There are three different types of ecological pyramids that you need to be aware of. Pyramids of energy, pyramids of biomass, and pyramids of number. So let's look at each one of those individually. 
First, the pyramid of energy. There is theoretically no limit to the number of trophic levels in a food web or the number of organisms that live on each level. However, only a small portion of the energy that passes through any given trophic level is ultimately stored in the bodies of organisms at the next level. Organisms expend much of the energy they acquire in life processes, such as respiration, <sighs> movement, growth, and reproduction. Most of the remaining energy is released into the environment as heat. Our bodies are warm, a byproduct of these activities. Pyramids of energy show the relative amount of energy available at each trophic level. On average, only about 10% of the energy available within one trophic level is transferred to the next trophic level. The more levels that exist between a producer and a consumer, the smaller the percentage of the original energy from producers that is available to that consumer. The next pyramid we're going to talk is a pyramid of biomass. This is the total amount of living tissue within a given trophic level. It's called its biomass. The amount of biomass is a, in a given trophic level can, be, can support and is determined in part by the amount of energy available. A pyramid of biomass illustrates the relative amount of living organic matter, got it, at each trophic level. Typically, the greatest biomass is at the base of the pyramid, as is seen in the field ecosystems modeled here. Most of it's here. Makes sense, right? Look outside, all the grass that you see and the trees, that's where most of the biomass is. The next one is the pyramid of numbers. A pyramid of numbers shows a relative number of individual organisms at each trophic levels in the ecosystem. In most ecosystems, the shape of the pyramid of numbers is similar to the shape of the pyramid of biomass for the same ecosystem, with the numbers of individuals on each level decreasing from the level below it. As it goes up, it gets less. But in some cases, however, consumers are much smaller than the organisms they feed upon. Thousands, for example, thousands of insects may graze on one single tree, but the tree has a lot of biomass but re represents only one organism. In such a case, the pyramid of numbers may be turned upside down, but the pyramid of biomass usually still has the normal or orientation. You can see that from the example right here. So, objective two, it's identify the three types of ecological pyramids. So the ecological pyramids show the relative amount of energy or matter contained within each trophic level in a given food chain or food web. And there again, there are three different types. Pyramid of energy, which shows a relative amount of energy available at each trophic level. A pyramid of biomass, which illustrates the relative amount of living organic matter at each trophic level. And third, a pyramid of numbers, which shows the relative number of individual organisms at each trophic level in the ecosystems. So for review, can you trace the flow of energy through living systems and identify the three types of ecological py py pyramids? And here's your cute picture while I turn off the video. <laughs>